there is an interrelationship between economics and politics. And we need to understand that. That is a fundamental truth all across the world, no matter what the society is, no matter what the economic structure is, no matter what the political structure is, there is a interrelationship between these two things. Politics is the art and process of gaining and maintaining and using power. The focus is on power, the process of its acquisition, maintenance, and utilization. And we are very proud to say that we are 57% of the city's population. But we don't really control 57% of much of anything if we're honest about it. The black church is an exception. We do own and control, well, except for the banks for some of them, about, well, at least we, we, we control 100% whether we own the buildings or not. But that's the only institution, the only one, in the community that we can really claim ownership to. So the essence of politics then is power, and we as a people have been taught that it is something wrong with wanting to gain power. If we talk about it, we're supposed to be, something is wrong with that discussion. The, the, the question is, if there's something wrong for African Americans to discuss the acquisition of power, why do non-African Americans hold on to it so tenaciously? Why aren't they willing to share it if there's something wrong with it? Let's share the negativity. But anybody who has it is trying to build a monopoly to maintain it. And it's not about sharing. So if that is the reality in which we live, then there must be a struggle on our part to get some of it. If 22% of Savannah is poor, that's 27,000 people. 80% of those look like me. Why is that? It is because Politics and economics have consistently worked together to put into an advantageous position one group at the expense and disadvantage of the other group. And the majority of the people in this room are in that other group. And that majority group ain't about to roll over and say, come on, let's have distribution of the wealth so that we can lift all boats and everybody is going to be on the even keel, that discussion ain't going to happen. So again, my point is, unless the African American community decides that its present economic condition is an unacceptable condition, and if they do not decide that there has to be a struggle to change the equation in that scenario, Again, 10 years from now, y'all will be here having the same dinner, talking about the same issues, talking about the little small gains that we have made in an economy that we are subject to rather than being parties of. So now because I'm getting, oh, it's even after two now. But let me, let, let, let me get to my final point. And I said this to the Hungry Club. The African American community does not have a political agenda. It does not have an economic agenda. It does not have a social agenda. It doesn't have a spiritual agenda. It has no agenda. We are working as individuals and as small groups coming up against each other first, which then diminishes our collective power. And so when we get to the real deal, 
we are dissipated and at each other's throats. Now, I know that some of you don't like this conversation in mixed company, but the mixed company already know it. They love it. They perpetuate it because it is to their advantage to keep us with no agenda, to keep us fighting among each other. It dissipates the power. And we know that when we are divided, we fall and fail. And when we are united, we are strong and powerful. So I'm not going to talk about all the progress we've made, because we have. But I'm talking about the disparity between what one group has and what we have. And we have built the wealth of that group by 300 years of free labor. Now, I'm not going back and talking about reparations and all that kind of stuff. Now, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about getting together as a community and deciding that we are in an unacceptable position educationally, which is the foundation to moving forward, that we are at a disadvantage economically, politically, in any other way you want to look at it, we are at a disadvantage. If that is unacceptable to you, then it is time for us to get an agenda together and to claim that we will not spend another decade in a similar condition being what we saw in the data. So that's my challenge to you. And since you know, I can't run again. You're going to hear more of it. <laughs> because I was a scholar before I was a politician. I'm not going to run for anything else. So I can do what Marie Evans says, speak the truth to the people. If you don't believe what I've said, I've got plenty of books and data to back it up. So if you're going to come at me, come right.